Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. And in this one, I'm going to talk about how to handle a buccal defect, more specifically, a fenestration defect, which is uh, quite common. I posted this case um, a few days ago on Facebook. And based on the amount of shares and likes, I decided to make a video so you can get a little bit more de details about this case because in a Facebook post, it's kind of hard to uh, share all the, really the small details that make a big difference. So uh, this is what this video is all about. So this patient came to see me a few weeks ago uh, with an obvious concern with a swelling on the gingiva on the upper right-hand side. Uh, there was uh, and basically an abscess that was draining through the buccal tissue. Uh, tooth number five, the second premolar had class three mobility. So uh, I assumed this is the source of the, the problem. There's no real pain because obviously there's a sinus tract that is draining the abscess. And the question is, what is the next step? We have a tooth with a class three mobility with an abscess. So we would assume uh, they are related. But next door, there's also a dental implant on the first premolar. So the question is, what is the diagnosis? So if you look carefully at the radiograph, let's start with the implant. There's a little bit of bone loss on the mesial aspect, looks like, and what looks like a very long retention screw. I actually didn't pay attention to this when I saw the patient, but the doctors that uh, saw my case, case online asked me about wh why is this retention screw so long, and I, I don't really have a good answer for that. But tooth number five has a radiolucency that seems to be increased on the mesial aspect, to some extent uh, going to the apical third, maybe a little bit on the distal as well. I would say uh, under normal circumstances, I would check for vitality, but with the severe mobility, I decided to look at the previous radiograph of tooth number five that showed a, a perfectly normal PDL. And from what I get, gathered from the dentist, the tooth had a crack and therefore it was crowned. And considering the class three mobility, the radiolucency, the large periapical lesion, and the fact that before the crown was done, there was a, a crack in the tooth, my diagnosis for this tooth is a root fracture and the prognosis is hopeless. So I recommended having the tooth extracted and replaced with an implant. My preference in these situations where there's a lot of infection and, and pus and drainage is to go for delayed placement. It'll allow for the infection to heal. It'll allow me to rebuild the site and create a better bony architecture to place an implant later on. Now, there are a few things that you need to consider when you see a patient coming in with a large infection with drainage and a buccal swelling. So there are a few key points that I wanted to emphasize to help you when you have similar cases presenting in your office. So anytime you have a buccal swelling with drainage, there's a very high probability, uh, probably 100%, that the buccal plate is compromised, whether you have a total dehiscence or a partial dehiscence, or you have a fenestration defect, there is uh, a compromise to the buccal plate and that needs to be addressed right after the extraction. There could also be some compromise to the bone around the implant and if uh, your patient is procrastinating in having these teeth extracted, you, you may wanna tell them that an infection on one tooth can create collateral damage on adjacent teeth and implants. So the implant can be damaged from an adjacent infection. So uh, that's another thing that we have to remember when we extract a tooth, there could be some effect on the adjacent teeth and implants. Now, when do we extract? With teeth like that, I, I like to call it, uh, we need to extract this tooth yesterday. But in reality, uh, the timing of the extraction may not be the best if you do it right there and then for two reasons. Number one, you need to prepare for some type of uh, provisional that, may, that may, may take time, number one. Number two, you're dealing with a purulent infection and my preference is always to place the patient on some type of antibiotics, systemic antibiotics for a few days or sometimes even a week. Uh, have this infection calm down 
even the fistula can close up and that will facilitate the extraction and more than that the grafting process and the tissue manipulation so a few days of systemic antibiotics will give you the time to prepare a provisional in this case a removable appliance because I'm going for a delayed placement so there will be no immediate implant provisional and the infection will come down, it'll facilitate my extraction bone grafting process. In terms of the timing of placement, I would probably wait a minimum of two to three months until the area is healed. I'll take a CT scan, I'll plan my case while my patient is in a, in a removable provisional. And of course, you have a few options. You can choose a, uh, an internal partial denture, like uh, what we call a flipper, or an Essex retainer. So when you have a patient coming in with a large infection, these are the things I'd like you to keep in mind when you plan your case. So the next step is to take a quick impression, make a, a partial Essex provisional with some composite inside, and place the patient on systemic antibiotics. She was allergic to penicillin, so I prescribed clindamycin, 150 milligrams, four times a day for one week, and scheduled the extraction a few days or about a week later. So in the next video, I'm going to show you the extraction and bone grafting process, more specifically how I handle the buccal defect in this case. I believe that every dentist needs to be able to extract teeth, help patients with the, this type of an infection, and also graft the site for an implant. It's actually one of the three most important procedures that every dentist needs to know. I'm giving a webinar on this topic on May 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'm gonna be talking about the three procedures every dentist needs to know and extraction bone grafting is actually the first one. I hope to see you online May 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can register through surgicalmasterwebinar.com. Uh, if you're seeing this video after the date, no worries, there's going to be a replay, I'll, I'm going to announce it, and also in my website that is uh, currently being built, there'll be a section of webinars, so you'll, you'll always be able to go back and watch all the webinars. But in the meanwhile, sign up for the webinar on the three procedures every dentist needs to know, and go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com to register. Stay tuned. Attention general dentists, attention general dentists. Hi everybody, Ziv Simon here, I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Are you feeling a little bit tired of restorative dentistry or frustrated with your surgeries? Do you want to build up your practice and develop some great surgical skills? If yes, you need to learn the three procedures every dentist needs to know. These procedures will not only increase your income, but allow you to deliver high quality care and convenience to your patients. With the proper knowledge and training, you can perform great surgery. I'd like to invite you to a webinar on the three procedures every dentist needs to know about. It's happening May 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Go to surgicalmasterwebinar.com to sign up. In this webinar, I'm gonna talk about the extraction process and bone grafting, as well as how I position the implant with CGI, computer-guided surgery, and then talk about crown lengthening, which is a very important procedure if you'd like to be good at surgery, it's almost like an entry procedure into the surgical world. So I look forward to seeing you at the webinar on the three procedures every dentist needs to know. It's happening May 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can increase your value because you know a lot more than you think. This upcoming webinar, I'm going to talk about the three most important and common procedures that you need to know and implement in your practice. We're going to start with extraction and bone graft uh, that I feel every dentist needs to be able to perform. I'm going to talk about CGI surgery, computer-guided implant surgery, where you can use the technology now available to every dentist anywhere in the world to place the implants safely and accurately. In this webinar, I'm also going to talk about crown lengthening, which is a very important periodontal procedure that I believe every dentist needs to know about. By knowing these three procedures, you can help your patients, you can build your practice, increase your bottom line, and have fun in the process. I'm super excited to share these three procedures with you. They're 
very simple, they're relatively low overhead, they're going to increase your bottom line, they're going to help your patients, you'll be compensated for them. So sign up for this webinar. Last time we had over a thousand doctors registering, we're expecting many more this time. This is Zeev Simon, creator of Surgical Master, to your surgical success.